Hey guys, it's Super FPV here, back with another video. Before we start with this one, remember to subscribe if you're new to this channel, and like the video if you do end up liking it, and let's get on into it. So today's video is on multimeters, and why I believe everyone in the world FPV should at least consider buying one of these, uh, because it can help tremendously when you're having issues with your quad, uh, and uh, yeah, let's get on into it. This specific one is the Astro AI AM33D. Uh, I bought this for about $9, I believe, and that's because it runs for about 11 11.99 ish and then there's usually a two dollar discount on amazon that you can tack on to it uh and you can get it for like about nine bucks which is great uh, i'll have it linked in the description below if you want it so what actually comes in the box well it comes with a box itself obviously and then it comes with a little bit of a manual on how to use everything uh, and then you have your multimeter by itself and two leads a red and a black lead that you connect uh onto the bottom right here and i'll show you which ones to connect to specifically use the continuity function which we're going to be discussing today I think everyone should have one of these because of the sole purpose of finding a short circuit on your drone sometimes it's really not obvious uh, what's shorting everything out or what's causing hot motors um, and having one of these will actually uh, give you a peace of mind if, to make sure that you don't have any short circuits um, that, that could uh, ruin your quads experience or sometimes actually just burn up your entire quad so having one of these uh, every time you uh, build a new quad or if you're diagnosing a hot motor or or a uh, hot carbon on like you know hot frame on your FPV drone um, having one of these is actually very crucial so you can actually rule out the fact that you don't have a uh, short circuit a short circuit or if you do have a short circuit you can actually uh, fix that problem uh, so so let's take a little inspection of uh, the multimeter itself we have a little red casing on the outside that it came with uh, it provides extra rubber uh, and grip uh, to it so that way it won't slip out of your hands when you're using it uh, you can take it off if you want but I'm gonna leave it on there it has an LED screen right here that reads the numbers uh, if I turn it on you can actually see that it'll start reading numbers um, and it's got a hold button and uh, and a little brightness button right here uh, it doesn't really increase the brightness all it does is just turn on this one LED right here that you can see on the side that illuminates the whole LED screen uh, it has this wide dial right here uh, with very tactile clicks uh, did I mention the buttons were mushy? <laughs> that was the one thing that I didn't like about it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's got very tactile clicks when you rotate it on about. Uh, that way uh, you won't miss and you won't accidentally slide the the knob to different different uh, stuff. It'll actually like click on there properly. Um, it's got three little little nubs right here where you actually connect the uh, the leads, um, the red and black leads uh, for the continuity mode that we'll talk about in a little bit. I'll, I'll show you specifically which leads to actually connect to. Flipping on over to the back, you can see there's a little kickstand right here that says made in China. Uh, and you that way you can just prop it on down there and you can do your, uh, your reading out and, and stuff. Uh, there's also a little battery cage right here. You do have to take a, a screwdriver to it to get to the battery. Uh, it's one of those big chunk of square batteries. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a very simple product. Um, <laughs> and let's uh, let's talk about using it. So I'm going to show you how to actually connect up everything. Uh, that way we can actually talk about the continuity function and I uh, can show you guys how to actually do everything that will help save your quad from burning up. Uh, and uh, other further issues. Uh, I'll talk about the uh, the most common spots for uh, uh, this to start beeping off because you have a short circuit and which ones are good beeps and which ones are bad beeps. So uh, let's get started. You have a black wire and you have a red wire and then you have three of these little plugs that you can actually put it into. Uh, the black wire you want to put it into the comm plug and the a red wire you want to put it into this one that says V ohm and then milliamp and then a squiggly line uh, and then you plug those two in and make sure make sure they're firmly in and you're good to go and the way that you want to actually get it into continuity mode is this little uh, signal that looks kind of like a Wi-Fi uh, that's your continuity mode uh, what you want to do is just kind of twist yourself down all the way down there and now you're in continuity mode you get your two leads that you connected put them together and it makes a little beep sound. Uh, if you find any sort of short uh, in your quad, that means these two are connecting together through the wiring in the flight controller or through the uh, through like the solder or through anything, through anything that's conductive. Uh, they're connecting together 
and um, that's not a good thing uh, most of the time unless you're on like five volt pad and stuff which I'll show you in a little bit so uh, let me bring out a flight controller and show you common things uh, uh, on a flight controller that shouldn't be uh, short circuited and everything so here we go we got a flight controller right here and my multimeter turned on into continuity mode uh, and let's get started so I do not have any short circuited pads on here even though this is a really old flight controller that's definitely broken um, but I will show you the basic concepts on this flight controller, so then we can move on into into a uh, into um, like an actual quad and everything. So uh, there are certain pads on a flight controller that are connected together. All five volt pads are connected together, and all nine volt pads are connected together. And then there are some other ones that are as well. So we've got a five volt pad right here, and another five volt pad right underneath it. And if I put these two leads together. it'll start making a beep and that's because the two five volt pads are connected together uh, throughout the flight controller and that's normal okay that's a normal beep that's a good beep but if you have beeps on pretty much any other pad for no reason like let's say two adjacent pads right here it won't beep for me because I don't have a short circuit on there but let's say two pads are connected together um, then it will start beeping. Uh, the most common way that people make this mistake is by uh, uh, just accidentally soldering these two pads together um, with uh, with like even the tiniest amount of solder would actually will actually bridge the two sod soldered pads together, causing a short circuit and causing issues with your uh, motors and your entire quad. So um, yeah, the, the main thing you want to look out for in a flight controller to, uh, you know, for hot motors and stuff in terms of continuity um, is the two pads that are together. Um, if they have a little bit of solder on them, sometimes you can't even see them. There, there was an instance uh, where I literally couldn't even see that there was a little teeny tiny little bridge of solder from an RX pad to a TX pad. And then when I actually took, uh, took the leads to pretty much every two pads, those two ended up beeping. Uh, and when I fixed that uh, and uh, made it clear uh, that to have two individual pads, it worked out everything worked out perfectly so uh, let's move away from the flight controller uh, and let's uh, go on to an actual quad and uh, and test these concepts out so let's talk about the ESC part right now this right here is my ESC on the bottom and as you can see that there are six little solder pads right there but each three corresponds to each of these motors on the side right here um, there are good beeps and there are bad beeps that can happen with the ESC and I'm going to talk about both of them. Um, every three motor wires are connected to this motor obviously um, and then these three are connected to this motor uh, and each wire is connected together inside the motor bell. Okay, So uh, if you have a beep uh, where you touch these two together, that's normal. If you have a beep where you touch these two together, that's normal. What's not normal is if you touch uh, a motor wire from one of your motors and you touch the motor wire of another one of your motors that's when you know you have a problem okay and that's the most common thing uh, that can happen with the ESC uh, I'm not gonna go super in detail and in, uh, into other uh, issues because this is the, the most common uh, issue that you can actually have uh, the fact that this motor is communicating with that motor or is in connection with that motor somehow within the ESC. Um, that's definitely a bad thing and that will cause uh, some major issues. So if these two are beeping together, no problem. But if the motor wires that are connected together inside of here and come out of here are beeping together, that's no big deal. So I saved the, the best for last. This is the third most common uh, uh, way that people actually cause short circuits. Uh, and that is by having your motor screws uh, that uh, are screwed way too high up and actually touch the motor windings inside your motor and that causes a short circuit throughout the entirety of your quad which is terrible okay because your quad is conductive this is carbon carbon is conductive carbon fiber is conductive um, and you can tell that by actually taking two leads and connecting them to the inner part of your of your quad as you can see the energy is traveling or the electricity is traveling or the current is traveling from one side to the other just because like that that, that just means that it's conductive so if you have a motor wire uh, 
uh, that's being touched by one of the screws, the screws are being touched by the carbon. That means that whatever electricity that goes on into the motor windings kind of gets sifted all the way through the entirety of your quad and uh, causes a huge short circuit, which is not good. And that causes hot motors uh, and your quad to be overworked. So the way to actually find that is quite easy, but kind of hard for me to actually show on here. Let's see if I can actually get this uh, situated properly. It's to take your lead right here, one lead, Put it onto your ESC just on any of the motor windings. It doesn't have to be a specific one. And then you put the second lead into the screw hole and you see if it beeps. And for mine, as you can see, it doesn't beep because I don't have a short circuit. Uh, and now if it were to beep, that means that you know you have a problem with that specific motor. It's this one that's causing the issue. And then you have to figure out which screw it is that's causing the issue and then you back it out. Uh, and then you do that for each of the four motors uh, to test it out. Uh, if you have beep, again, if you have beep from here, going on from one of your motor wires into the screw, then you know you have a problem. So actually I forgot one last thing, and the last thing I wanna show you is uh, is with capacitors, and this is kind of an example of, uh, of uh, a good beep actually, uh, when the beep actually fades away. So let me actually show you what happens with that. So I have my capacitor right here that I actually taped down onto my quad because it kept rolling away when I kept trying to do this demonstration. So um, what the capacitor does is, uh, is something quite interesting. And if this happens on your quad, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. The only beeps that you have to worry about are continuous beeps and not momentary ones, which I will show you right now. Uh, when I take a lead and put it on either end, you can see the numbers going up. And some uh, uh, multimeters actually start beeping and then it'll stop beeping and go back down to one. Uh, and that's just a normal behavior of capacitors, okay? If you have something like that happening on your, on your quad, don't worry about it. That's just normal. That's a good beep, okay? That's not a bad beep. But if that capacitor were to actually just continuously beep, then you have a problem. And if you do have a capacitor that you just did that to, all you have to do is just take one of your leads and short both of them out. And you can go back to, you know, it does its thing again. And it comes back down to one, as you can see. So if it comes back down to one uh, or zero, whatever number it is, the base number, uh, you're good to go. And that's perfectly fine. So that's it for the video, pretty much. Hopefully I convinced you guys that you might want to actually invest a little bit of money into buying a multimeter because it can be quite helpful. Uh, it can help, you know, uh, prevent any further short circuits or, or uh, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, burning up your quad. You know, that, that's like the, the biggest risk that you can get uh, is actually burning up your entire quad. Uh, I think uh, I think I explained it relatively well, <laughs> uh, even though my demonstrations weren't the best things in the world. Um, there are many, many different ways that you can actually cause a short circuit. And all I did today was show you um, the most common ones. Uh, so, yeah, multimeter with continuity mode. Definitely going to be your savior uh, if you have something that's mechanical causing a short circuit uh, that you really can't figure out where it's coming from. Uh, this thing will actually help you a ton. So uh, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, uh, please do comment down below and I will be more than happy to answer them uh, like I usually am. And uh, that's pretty much it. So see you in the next one.